Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Professor Man uh, Ferrier, for uh, the invitation. Uh, my presentation will be <clears throat> slightly different from the ones we saw be, uh, up to now. I'll be talking about ultra-high strength steel composite systems that, uh, again, to make it even more different from the uh, previous one, uh, I will describe you the work that has been done using these materials installed not with epoxies that they can obviously be installed with, but uh, using um, uh, mineral matrices. And in particular, we look into uh, cement mortars as well as hydraulic line for uh, strengthening masonry structures. Um, briefly, since probably none of you know Caracol, or at least a uh, few of you, uh, Caracol was a company um, born in 1869. Uh, as the name uh, uh, means uh, glue in Greek, um, we are now present uh, in Europe and worldwide, and uh, obviously. <coughs> We are continuously growing in the uh, civil engineering as being born as a laying product uh, manufacturer. Now we are present also uh, in civil engineering worldwide. And in personally, I'm, I'm responsible for uh, the strengthening uh, products uh, sector uh, in the company. Obviously, the, uh, our vision that in a sense uh, meets uh, quite well now what has happened recently in Italy is uh, going from uh, traditional building construction into a more sensitive and innovative construction vision where the house uh, obviously is represent the um, excellent indoor living and uh, high safety standards. Uh, we are, what we faced uh, so far uh, after the earthquake that recently struck uh, Italy is uh, uh, I felt like if I were driving a car that was bought uh, in 1960 and never did any refurbishment except just by some paint uh, uh, work. And so obviously the homes that we live in, they need to be uh, updated to n uh, normal standards. Uh, a lot of research obviously uh, is necessary. This is our uh, laboratory center in uh, Sassuolo near Modena. Uh, and. Uh, <coughs> The reason uh, uh, where do we come from? Well, we know we know very well FRPs. We know what they are. We, uh, we know the materials, mainly carbon, glass, as uh, previous speakers spoke, uh, also armed. But uh, <clears throat> the problem is that these material uh, are excellent when we talk about uh, reinforced concrete structures, although they, uh, they show some issues like uh, uh, compatibility with supports, uh, let's, let's think, for example, when we need, like the previous question, when we need to install in the very high temperatures or where there are issues related to humidity. And so obviously <clears throat> the use of epoxy may not be always the, uh, the, perfect, uh, the perfect material, the perfect metrics. Now, if you look at these pictures on the left, we have a masonry vault made of timber elements and uh, very poor uh, straws, uh, uh, strengthening system made of natural materials. Now, in that case, it was chosen to, uh, to be retrofitted using carbon fibers. Now, perfect, fine, it's a very high, strong and strengthened materials, but it's probably installed on the weakest uh, possible strengthening system, construction system that we have uh, in Italy. So, on a, on a solution like that, obviously when we use the same technology that was developed for concrete, and it's great when we talk about um, concrete retrofitting, column confinement, but then we take it to the most uh, poorest uh, uh, substrate, then uh, it's probably better to start thinking whether the, uh, the solution uh, is correct or no. And, uh, and second of all, I want to show you, uh, as probably um, <clears throat> it was said just a few minutes ago, the installation in this case uh, uh, of, uh, of, the, um, of the fibers that were definitely not done in a very in a correct way, we see the the FRP uh, bonded on the on the slab that was uh, not properly installed. So the issue, and sometimes another aspect that is very important about speaking about these materials is the fact that we need high specialty contractors. And when the materials does not fall in the hand of a high specialty contractor, then we start having problems. And because unfortunately these materials cannot be installed only by high specialty contractors several times we have uh, issues like the one on the right. So 
the uh, the whole purpose uh, when we started this uh, uh, this work uh, uh, four years ago, and personally, obviously, uh, my background is on FRP. Uh, I did I worked with DJ in Rolla and uh, work uh, in the US before coming back to Europe. Uh, is uh, why don't we look at new fibers that can be installed either with epoxy, but also with uh, other matrices like, for example, mortar for hydraulic line that can be more compatible with the substrate when we are dealing with different types of substrates. So not always the same system for every structure, for every member, but new solutions for depending on where we need to install these materials. So <clears throat> the, the, the core objective was to develop more efficient, more compatible, removable, uh, easy to and rapid to install, not necessarily to a lower cost, but the rapidity of installation always tends to induce also the reduction of cost and uh, uh, obviously maintaining their durability over time and the possibility of having them certified. And as for us, as uh, since we call ourselves dream building companies, obviously the respectful towards health and environment is very important. So not uh, even the epoxy uh, that was developed but was more uh, you know, human friendly than uh, traditional epoxy that always needs a mask and so on uh, to be uh, to be used. So the material going back to, firstly to the to the new type of fibers. I don't know if uh, any of you knew it, even though the first test I conducted was back in 2002. Is a unidirectional sheet made of uh, ultra high strength galvanized steel micro cords. So durability is achieved through the galvanization of the cords and uh, by immersion in the matrix has been, and, and then I'll show you how uh, this has been tested so far. And also the bond, one of the advantages of steel uh, in, the, uh, in the form of cords, micro cords, is the fact that the bond with the matrix is much, much better than any other type of material. So when we tend to use uh, uh, traditional fibers uh, and, we and we bond them with mortars, we tend to have slip and the classical uh, telescopic failure. In this case, the experience so far, and now we have a lot of experience in this, is that we actually do not have this type of failure. The bond is much higher, and the strength, uh, the stress actually we can achieve with this material, with this uh, uh, marriage of uh, steel and, uh, and matrices is much higher. Then the, the way the material is weaved and is presented obviously make it much easier to install. And I'll show you some detailing that can be achieved with this material that is, uh, in a sense, is easier of uh, the type of connection that we have seen so far. Well, uh, these are tests conducted on, uh, on the material itself following the ICC standards as well as the Italian standards on uh, uh, the durability of the material emerged in uh, uh, in solution, uh, uh, alkaline and um, salt solution for 1,000, 3,000 hours. You see on the upper left uh, the test uh, of the material being done as it is. On the right after uh, 3,000 hours and we achieved basically the loss of only 4%. Then we also tested um, one good question could be what happened when the material needs to be bent in order to confine in a column. So in this case we uh, we tested before uh, the blue line and the red line. We lost 15%, uh, but we know when we go into confinement that we need to allow only uh, four, uh, uh, four um, micro strains, when, uh, 0.04 micro strain. So we only allow 25% of the strength of the ultimate strength. So as you can see here, we obviously reach much higher than 25%. Uh, and then we also did the test, the durability test of the material bent uh, before and after. So showing that obviously bending is uh, actually the element that is uh, reducing the strength, but not really uh, the uh, durability. Another material uh, that we have start working with is basalt. Uh, the reason why basalt, because uh, uh, experience has shown that as a uh, uh, same pretty much durability of alkaline resistant glass fibers, but it has much higher uh, toughness uh, comparable to aramid. And so obviously uh, being a natural material provided a better solution to be more sustainable to respect to existing, uh, existing fibers. Now the, the research, the really core of research that was done in these materials were in looking, was in developing a mortar 
that we have the high strength uh, 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 needed for uh, for bonding this material. In this case, in R4. So we are looking at material that has 50 to 60 megapascal compressive strength, but could have also the granulometry very fine in order to uh, perme uh, permeate into the material and allow bonding with the microcords. If we if we tend if we were going to use a traditional high strength mortar where it has a grain uh, much higher than uh, you know a point, point 0.6 uh, uh, millimeters as uh, this mortar has, obviously we were not able to achieve the same bond. So the same was also, uh, and this was achieved by developing our laboratory a new hydraulic binder that uh, also allowed the reduction of uh, Portland cement. So there is really few Portland cement into the mortar. And the same uh, hydraulic binder was also used to develop a hydraulic lime, higher strength uh, hydraulic lime mortars that are used now for strengthening um, for strengthening uh, masonry structures. And the advantage of using, uh, again, uh, mortars, and particularly when looking at masonry structures, is the, trans the transpirability and the possibility of combining this retrofit system with uh, other solution for allowing the, the, the masonry to breathe that is very essential because otherwise if we tend to cover with materials that are not transpir uh, transparent, obviously we could have problems in the interface between the strengthening materials and the substrate, those compromising the bond uh, between, between those. So all the materials obviously are tested, uh, also the fiber are testing in a uh, coming in house. Uh, I, would love, I would want you uh, to stress the attention on the, on the test we're currently doing, well, we are completing in the past three years. Working with the University of Bologna, we did obviously single lap shear test where we were able to determine the bond and um, uh, between concrete and mortar with the substrate. Obviously, we did some tensile test uh, in order to determine the uh, properties of the uh, steel and basalt system. We did a bending test uh, on beams, uh, and uh, also we are running a column test because, as being steel, obviously the material is much more tougher on uh, on corners so that actually we looked uh, uh, as you can see here the corners are not actually rounded as uh, in traditional FRP application and this is one of the advantage of using steel because obviously the uh, confinement uh, given supply by steel is obviously higher. Now I will not show you tests uh, done on, on the SRP on the version installing fibers this type of materials with uh, with uh, epoxy, but obviously there is a lot of work uh, uh, performed on this. Uh, also with the University of Salerno, again, more tests on, uh, on beams uh, and bond, but also tests on beam column joints that are just about to be completed. We are missing just one test. And the results here, uh, as Mauricio showed before, are very um, promising because the results are very, are very good, both on uh, um, columns uh, retrofitted as new but also on repair columns so the tests are really showing good results both uh, with epoxy and with mortar. Uh, yet at the University of Bologna with uh, looking on misery again bond test but also real scale test uh, on, uh, on vaults. Here we are in Turin uh, in, a, in a job site. As you can see Bottom here, you see the, the, the test of the unstrengthened uh, vaults, and then all the others are uh, of uh, vaults strengthened above, below, and above and below with connectors in between. So the ductility and the strength increase is obviously very high, even when we switch from epoxy to uh, mortar base. And in this case, uh, an hydraulic line based mortar was used, uh, an M15 mortar was used to bond the, uh, uh, the, the basalt grid. <clears throat> also, with the University of Roma 3, we continued done uh, bond test uh, to add data points also from different laboratories to the one we already had. Also, we did uh, shaking table test, probably Professor De Felice that will come uh, later on uh, between today and tomorrow will present some of the results. I'm just here. I want to concentrate on some application, but we did shaking table test on uh, overturning facades, strengthening with these materials, and the results were really promising because the layer, the thickness was very thin. We are talking about few mils, but the results was giving, achieving uh, strength and, uh, and ductility. Also now we are running uh, vault test uh, in the strengthening of vaults in the laboratory 
uh, as again uh, uh, more in order to collect more data points also from laboratories. Uh, we also did the University of Padova with Professor Modena. We did tests on uh, internal infill walls. Uh, you see here the uh, <coughs> the bottom the bottom wall without any strengthening, and then by adding uh, just the mortar, better mortar, better, better plaster than traditional cement plaster, plaster with uh, with a grid and plus plaster with grid and connectors. How we increase the ductility, the overturning of the walls that were tested in plane and out of plane uh, up to failure. And then again, more tests in the field, the unstrengthened vaults. Here you have the strengthened vaults with uh, carbon fibers uh, as traditional retrofit. And again, the system strengthened with uh, steel fibers and hydraulic lime having uh, uh, by uh, paper the same actual stiffness as the carbon fiber. So again, we need to think a new materials, new solution without compromising safety and uh, obviously strength, but in this case actually increasing the ease of installation because when we go into this type of structures, obviously we don't need to redo or prepare a perfect uh, surface, but we can use the same mortar to prepare the surface and then install directly. So the time that we stay on job is actually reduced by several amount of days of work because we don't need to achieve uh, humidity zero as needed by traditional uh, epoxies, but we can install directly mortar on mortar. Uh, more tests at university on uh, pull off of uh, spikes uh, uh, directly realized by steel into the masonry, uh, as well as diagonal compression on real case studies. Here you see the unstrengthened wall, they strengthened and tested after 12 days because the job needed to go on. And then also we achieved the 30, 30 days as normal mortar needs to achieve in order to have a fuel curing and so you see how the increase uh, of the curing uh, obviously per allowed almost double uh, the, 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 the strength but most importantly for me is not really the strength because the wall was also injected with mortar with the same lime mortar but what in the increase of ductility achieved uh, using the, uh, the grid uh, on, uh, on the two facades of the wall. These are some of the universities also. We are doing now tests at University of Sharjah and Qatar durability tests. We are working with the University of Miami for a certification on the ICC, University of Rolla, and then also other universities in Italy uh, for doing more tests. Mm. Here are some applications very quickly. Uh, here we are at the circuit Mo of Monza, uh, the underpass La Roja, where uh, strengthening was needed because of the poor condition of the, uh, of the concrete. This is the historic uh, uh, parabolic uh, old circuit that goes above the new, the existing one where the Formula One runs. And uh, so it was strengthened because uh, the old uh, circuit was needed for uh, uh, old car racing, but also because of the, of the possibility of falling uh, concrete uh, uh, pieces on top, of the, uh, 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 on top of the Formula Ones. Here we have uh, in Torino uh, a strengthening of columns. The, one of the advantages here, you see the bending, one of the advantages of steel is that material can be coupled also with uh, steel plates because we don't have any problem of uh, galvanic corrosion, plus we don't have any problems of uh, plating the material of suffering uh, stress concentration. So the advantages of this material is actually much higher when we need to do also some solution like this one where obviously FRPs, traditional FRP or uh, uh, confinement is not sufficient. Uh, some more detailing, almost done. This uh, another work uh, uh, is, a, is a structure, reinforced concrete structure uh, designed by Nervi, Pierluigi Nervi. Um, it was the needed uh, confinement in the column, in the arches, uh, in the part of the arches. And again, here the uh, solution chosen was uh, by using steel wrapped and in this case installed with mortar and not epoxy. And you see here the preparation. Uh, a Barilla factory, in this case, uh, the solution was chosen uh, not because of the fiber, but because of the epoxy. Uh, one uh, uh, aspect that was very important was uh, developing an epoxy that was uh, totally uh, VOC free. So we have no volatile organic compounds, uh, neither at the beginning, neither at the end, obviously. Um, emitted and this is very important when looking at a factory like this one where we manufacture in this case pasta but the uh, same uh, reason was uh, for Nestlé 
uh, near Parma where they manufacture uh, um, ice cream. So the advantage is using a VOC free products was the possibility of uh, starting the production immediately after the strengthening was completed. And here is some detailing of the bean column joints uh, installed. Uh, here is uh, interesting also some of the, the testing being done, bond test and pull-off test. Uh, this is actually a homemade uh, shear test uh, on a column where the contractor uh, has a request of the engineer. This is an, an aspect that probably we won't talk about in this conference, but uh, uh, the possibility of checking the, uh, the efficiency of the system or uh, at least the efficiency of the contractor that is installed is one of the aspects that is very important uh, and is uh, facing one issue uh, critical uh, here in Italy as well. Uh, a school being strengthened. I wanted to show you the detail we talked about before about full wrapping and continuity. In this case, the wrapping, the shear wrapping starts uh, uh, above in the slab and is follow and it goes through the slab, the 16th floor, continuity, you see here the holes in the fiber passing through and the advantage of this material that we don't need to have any spikes. We can go through with one single lap. So we don't have to worry about uh, detailing of overlapping, but this advantage of uh, having this type of material and the way the material is manufactured. Uh, briefly, one uh, case study on masonry that is uh, probably significant. You all know this basilica because you've probably seen it from the L'Aquila earthquake. There was the partial collapse of the cupola of the Basilica of the Anime Sante in L'Aquila. This was the situation as it was after the earthquake. Uh, so one, um, uh, the one, one of the aspects of the reconstruction was actually to strengthening the cupola and providing uh, active uh, pretensioning of the, st of the strips. Now, we, uh, one, we haven't talked so far. Um, one issue that we have with FRP is the difficulty, as a matter of fact, when Mauricio spoke before of wrapping with steel, applying pretensioning, because with have traditional FRP is quite difficult. So one advantage of this material is that we can um, plate it and grab it with plates and provide, uh, and provide tensioning. Here you see the, the tensioning system um, at three different levels because we have three stripes of material. And here you have the system uh, as it was designed. Uh, so we have the plate and in between you see these bolts where by coupling uh, it was applied the tensioning force uh, to the material. Now you probably, I don't know if you can ap appreciate below here there is the Teflon because obviously because of the of the radius, the corner radius of the cupola it was needed in order to provide, to avoid any uh, any friction between the FRP, well the, the steel uh, wrapping and the uh, uh, and the substrate. Then finally, once it was placed into tension, then the material was bonded, was bonded, was covered, was impregnated with epoxy, and then on top, a solution, in, interesting solution was designed in order to provide the plastering made of uh, lime in order to provide the old look to the, uh, to the basilica. Uh, this is a strengthening scheme uh, installed for the vaults. <coughs> Now here, I, I want, well, first of all, I want to point out this bad detailing. This is not, it's not due to us, but it was designed this way, useless as it is, because obviously making the fiber going up and up all this way makes no sense. But uh, I want to, one of the problem we have is uh, the use, uh, the preview use of a lot of concrete in uh, masonry structures. And in case, in this case, the, the concrete cap that was placed on the existing vaults was not even connected. So, the strengthening was uh, uh, made in order to provide connection between the concrete cap and the existing masonry vaults and also retrofitting and because it was not considered sufficient and so this was this is the reason why it was designed. Some detail in order to provide overpassing of the fibers on top of, uh, of, uh, of parts of masonry where it was a higher cross section. And this is another detailing that is possible with this fiber at the end of the, uh, of the arch or of the vault because in continuity by simple injection with, uh, with hydraulic lime uh, fluid, hydraulic lime mortar, we can connect without needing extra pieces. So we simply cut the strips slightly longer and then we isolate the cords and we group it as they were here into the holes and providing connection with the existing uh, with existing boundary walls. 
Now we, I'll be speaking slightly, we developed also, was developed not by us, by, by um, a consultant, uh, also software for designing. Uh, the software ba is based on, uh, on the fiber model by which we discretize the entire cross-section. I mean, by providing the model, the uh, material constitutive model for concrete, uh, uh, FRP and steel, we are able to reproduce the entire cross-section. And in reality, also in addition to checking a uh, single cross-section, we have the ability also of, uh, of modeling arches and, uh, and elements. And so we can actually have a very good reproduction of the stress level in vaults and uh, concrete and beam elements. We also, since uh, uh, a lot of work was needed and a lot of engineers don't know about detailing, we also develop a handbook uh, that soon will be also translated in English. The handbook contains all detailings needed for strengthening uh, vaults. For example, it's divided into three chapters, masonry, uh, concrete, there's also infill uh, walls. So we provide all the detailings uh, for engineers in order to design uh, with our solution. Obviously, the detailing can be applied to any, roughly to any material, but obviously then it's uh, kind of uh, specified for ours. And then I'm, uh, I'm done. If you have any questions, I don't know. <clears throat> Thank you, Paolo, for introducing me to this new material I hadn't heard of before. It sounds well, great. Well, it started in the U.S. The first test was done uh, in Bloomington, Ohio, during my PhD in 2002. It was installed by SBS, and uh, and since then I kind of worked on uh, on these uh, these material, and then thanks to my landing in Caracol, then we are able to kind of uh, uh, obviously. Uh, start uh, a new a new era and a new uh, much more work on it. Any other questions? Maybe I I have one um, uh, for the um, the detailing and the calculation. Do yeah. you use normal uh, calculation? Yeah. Okay. Like In, when, yes. When we install it with the epoxy. We recently uh, demonstrated with work done in Bologna that basically, not basically, that you can follow exactly the same, the same design. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, we we recently completed our certification process in Italy and also started the European level for uh, uh, the epoxy version. So when you install it with epoxy, basically it's like treating any other material. So you have the equivalent thickness, you have the Yam modulus, and you design as any other FRP. When you go into uh, the mortar version, then uh, the work that has been done mainly uh, on at the bond level now uh, with Professor Carloni at the University of Bologna, but also with Professor De Felice, showed that basically so far the model that we used for, because we don't have the slippage, so we don't have the problem of telescopic uh, uh, failure. So as you achieve in many other type of these materials that for some reason is good, but the other question is how can you take into that account? So you need to stop the formability when you start having this problem. So, so far we saw that the same laws applied for FRP can work, but obviously we are developing and probably we should be okay by the end of this year, beginning of 2017, to have a constitutive model for bond for this new family of materials. Uh, because, for example, if you check the, the equation on beams that we have tested at the University of uh, Salerno, for example, and you apply the same law for FRP, then obviously you get exactly the same result. So now, obviously, that's the type of beam. We repeated the beams in, uh, in, uh, in Rolla. We repeated also in the uh, University of Bologna. So we are checking how the shape of the beam, obviously the stiffness of the beam makes uh, an uh, in terms of confinement as well, one for me, because obviously we are here speaking about seismic, one aspect that this material is really efficient is in, size, is, uh, in confinement because the, in terms of ductility, it's like any other fiber. So it has no ductility, the material itself, but the induced ductility and the fact that it doesn't fail in the corners as traditional FRP do, even though they provide an excellent enhance of ductility, is another advantage uh, towards the performance of the material that right now I make the example is like having a Ferrari and make it go in second. 
I cannot switch it to the other gears because I don't have exactly the design, but that's where uh, we are working uh, in that direction. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.